What's up you guys? Welcome back. Today I'm super excited because we're gonna be doing a testing viral products that TikTok made me buy. Every time I scroll on TikTok, there's something else that just sucks me in. And there's so many products on TikTok that go viral, but honestly, not all of them are worth the virality. Like not all of them are actually good. So I have a bunch of stuff that I've been seeing all over my FYP that I got that we are going to test to see like, are they actually good? Are they actually worth the virality and worth your money? If you guys don't follow me on TikTok, definitely follow me over there. My at is at Kelly Strack official. I just recently hit 500k over there and I do upload every single day so I have so much fun over there I really love the platform but of course we got to bring the TikTok viral products to the YouTube family as well and see if these are actually good because a lot of them are viral on YouTube and other platforms as well and we have some like different things today I have some hair stuff some clothes and some beauty stuff so it's not just makeup um we even have like a skincare product too so I'm really really excited make sure you guys subscribe to my channel if you have not already and click the little bell right next to the subscribe button so you can notify of all my future uploads and without further ado let's go ahead and get started all right the first one we're gonna test out is a hair one because we're gonna let this marinate in our hair as we go through the rest of the video because they take a while to work so I've tried these quite a few times I've tried them a bunch of different ways today's way I'm really hoping works because I haven't had the best success with them basically these are volumizing clips for your hair so what you do is you take a section of your hair. I'm gonna take this section right here where my part is like this now I'm gonna spray it with some volumizing texture spray I have not done this step yet the first time I did it I used hairspray but apparently the key is volumizing texture spray. Get that on there and then you take the clip and you clip it like this on the hair and you let it sit. So we're gonna go all through the hairline and do that same step. Spritz and clip. They are quite easy to apply so I will give them that. Like it's not difficult to put these in. So I did three on this side. I'm gonna let the hair down. They kind of like look crazy when they're in. Three on this side. I'm gonna go do three on the other side now. And I am gonna let these marinate in my hair throughout the tutorial, like throughout the rest of the products that we're gonna try. And then at the end, we will take them out and see if they actually gave us volume to our hair because my hair is flat, so I need all the volume that I can get. And I'm really hoping that this little combo, these with the volumizing spray, probably hit them with some heat before I take them out. But for now they marinate. I did get these off Amazon. They were really affordable. I can link them down below. I think it was under $20 for the pack. Up next, we are going to try the Kosas Dream Bean. I don't know about you, but I have seen this nonstop all over my feed. So I had to get it. Packaging, really, really cute. I got it at Sephora and this is basically a mineral sunscreen. It is SPF 40, but it is supposed to give a really beautiful glow to the skin. So let's go in and see. Y'all know I love my sunscreens. Okay, it's actually a lot less glowy than I thought it would be. I thought it would be more glowy than it is. Okay, it is pretty, but I feel like on other people when I saw them apply it to their skin, it looks a lot glowier than it does on mine. Like it gives a subtle glow, but it's nothing crazy. I do think that will make this a good product to wear underneath makeup, which is nice. Cause if it was too glowy, it might not layer great underneath makeup. But is it weird that I'm kind of disappointed? I don't know. I thought it would give more of a noticeable glow. It's definitely very subtle. I don't hate it. It's just not what I expected. It does not give any white cast though, which is nice. So I do definitely like that. So with this one, I would say, I guess it depends what you're looking for. If you want something really glowy, this is not gonna be for you. If you want something with more of a subtle glow though, you will probably really like this. I do not have any new foundation, so I'm gonna just go in and throw some on before we test the rest of the products. Okay, can confirm that foundation layers fine on top of the Costa sunscreen, which is great. Okay, up next, before we jump into more of the beauty stuff, let's talk some clothes. Chances are, if you're on TikTok, you have seen Halara. I got it all all over my FYP. Literally, I feel like for the past year, I keep seeing it. They have the cutest stuff. Like it's more athleisure, most of their stuff, I would say, but a lot of it can definitely be worn out. I personally wear it all the time. The top I am wearing right now, it's one of my favorites. It has this little cutout here and it's just like cropped. It's very, very cute, flattering and comfortable material. I kept seeing their stuff. I was like, okay, this is so cute. They ended up emailing me. So I want to thank them for partnering with me. They sent me a bunch of their products and they did give me a code, which is Strack20, where you guys can get 20% off on their site, but their stuff is so good. The fabrics are so comfortable and they're very flattering, but they're still breathable. I have a couple other shirts that I love from them that honestly I wear to the gym sometimes and then sometimes I wear them out too because they're cute enough I feel like to be worn both ways so I can put some of the other options on the screen here so you guys can see some of the other ones that I really love from them. They do also have a lot of dresses too, which I really like, but they all have shorts underneath them so you don't have to worry. They're like little cute like active wear tennis dresses. It's so easy. It's one piece you put it on and you're ready to go. Very flattering to like a variety 
variety of different body types. They're stretchy and comfortable and they come in a bunch of different colors too. So there's a lot of different variety and options. I tend to go for black most of the time, but they have a lot of really pretty bright colored ones as well. And I love the fact that there are shorts underneath them. You don't have to worry about it like blowing up. You get the best of both worlds. They do have removable pads in them and pockets. I did want to call special attention to their wannabe collection. This is the black dress that I'm wearing. This one is super versatile. If you're taller, they have a long version of the dress. If you have a bigger bust, they have up to a triple D version that has more support and coverage. Also for pet owners, they have dresses that are made with pet hair resistant fabric, which is really cool and adjustable straps. And they keep launching new dresses in the wannabe line to cater to a full range of body types and lifestyles. So they, I can 100% say are worth the hype. And again, if you guys want to get anything, you can use code STRACK20. That'll work on all of their full price items to get you 20% off. So I will put a link to them down below in the description box if you want to check them out, as well as everything else that we test in today's video. All right, up next, we have a very viral product that it has been so hard for me to not try these. I've been saving them for this video. I'm like, oh, I want to test it, but they are the new NARS liquid blushes. These look so beautiful. So I've had this little puppy for a while now holding off for this video. So I have it in the shade Orgasm, which is like their OG sort of shade. YouTube, please don't demonetize me for saying that, but this is what it looks like. Really, really cute. Everyone's jumping on a liquid blush train and I personally love it. So let's see how this stacks up against these 7 million other liquid blushes on the market. Just gonna tap some on my cheek and let's go in and blend it out. Ooh, okay, she's pretty. She is definitely sheer, not, I don't know if sheer is the right word. They're a lighter coverage, but I don't hate that. I love a good pigmented blush, but sometimes you don't want that and you want something a little less pigmented. That's not gonna take a hundred years to blend out. And that's what I would say these are for. If you're a person that loves a really bright, super pigmented blush, this might not be your favorite. Oh, but the finish is so pretty. It has like, it gives a glowy finish without using glitter, which is what I personally love. I love like blushes that give you that glow, but don't use glitter to do it. That finish is stunning. They do have a bunch of different shades. This is one of the lighter ones. So I would say, I'm gonna go in with a little bit more on this side. Some of the darker ones may be, you know, show up more pigmented. This is definitely on the lighter side, but I would definitely use this on days when I want something more natural and see now that I layer a second layer on this side, it's definitely more pigmented. So, I mean, it really depends how much you use. It's not gonna be like the rare beauty blushes that it's like, you need the tiniest little dab and then you'll be blending it out like all over your face basically because there's that pigmented. This is definitely a different vibe from that, but still very beautiful. And I actually love this shade with that two layers. I feel like for me is like the perfect pigment and the finish is what I feel like really sets it apart. It has a really, really beautiful finish with like a subtle glow, glowing from within sort of look. So I do really like that. Definitely wanna try some other shades in this. Let me know if you guys have tried these, what your thoughts are and what your favorite shade has been. Okay, up next, if I see one more person with this one size, pink powder, okay? Everyone makes it look like this is like the most amazing powder ever. And it's like pure pink, but it's supposed to be very brightening to the under eyes. I went to Sephora and picked it up. The packaging I love automatically because Laura Mercier makes a pink powder that I really, really like. But the thing about Laura Mercier's packaging is there's no stopper in the powder. So unless it's sitting straight flat like this, which a lot of times in my drawers, I'm like jumbling through them and it can be flipping around. Then the cap gets filled with powder. They're a disaster to travel with. I really wish they would add like stoppers like this in them. So love that one size did that. Automatically really love that. Now let's see how the pink powder performs. This is in the shade Ultra Pink. I just got probably too much in the cap there, but it is pure pink. Like this one I would say is more pink than the Laura Mercier one is. The Laura Mercier one is a bit lighter of a pink. And like the goal is to brighten the under eyes. Like I don't wanna look like I have blush underneath there. Oh my goodness. It is as good as everybody says it is. Dang, this is nice. It's finely milled, so it doesn't feel super like cakey or drying on the under eyes. And it also does not look super pink, which that's what I was most nervous about. Cause this is like a true pink. Like literally the color is more pink than the cap even is. But somehow when it goes on the eyes, it doesn't like give it, it's not giving like blush underneath my eyes. Like it does give it brightness and sets everything, but it's not too pink. I really, really do like this. It honestly reminds me a lot of the Laura Mercier one I like with better packaging. So I really can't complain. I do like the other one size, the pressed powder that they have. Or I think is that, it might be technically a powder foundation. I use it sometimes as a pressed powder. I do like that product too. So it doesn't surprise me 
but the powder is really good. But I would say this one does live up to the hype. I definitely like it. Okay, up next we have a brow gel. Now you all probably know the got to be gel, like it's meant for like your hair. Typically that's how it would be used. It came in like a little yellow squirty tube. So a lot of people, I know I always saw Julia Havens. She would use that with like a spoolie in her brows. And I think she was the first person that I saw do that. And I was like, oh, that's really interesting that she's using like a hair gel in her brows. But like, you know, your brows are hair, so whatever. And I guess it's actually a very popular thing. A lot of people do it. People also use it like for their edges. So got to be came out with it in like a brow gel sort of form so that you didn't have to like squeeze it out onto a spoolie and have it be really messy. So we're going to go in with this. I've seen a lot of people use this and I just got mine on Amazon. I want to say it was under $10. So drugstore price point and it is fluffing up my brows well. And to me, the biggest test when it comes to brow gels is are they going to change the color of my brow? And I do not think that one did. It is truly clear because so many brow gels that are supposed to be clear end up making your brows like a weird kind of grayish color or putting a weird cast to them. And this is not doing that, but it is holding my brows in place. Now let us let this dry down and see. Let's see if it gets like really crunchy, but seems really good, honestly. I'm gonna give it a second to dry. All right, it has fully dried. I feel like it might have made my brows a smidge lighter, but really not very much. And they feel like they are not going to move, but they don't feel super crunchy. So I definitely like this. I think it's good. Okay, up next we have this Dior blush that I got suckered into. After I tried the viral pink one, I said I would never buy another one of them because they are nice. But these blushes are $40. These are the Rosy Glow blushes. You guys know the pink one that went viral. It's like a bubblegum pink. I bought that one. It's not that it's not a nice blush, but for 40 bucks, it's nothing life changing, but they came out with new shades and this red one really spoke to me. This is the shade Cherry and it is beautiful. I do not have a lot of blushes that are this shade. The pink one, like I have a thousand blushes that are pretty much the same shade as that. This one, I don't have as many. So that's how I justify buying it again for 40 bucks. And also obviously I wanna test it for you guys. Packaging is really nice. You can't take that away from Dior. The experience, it's luxury. It's giving luxury and for $40, it should. But let's see if the product's actually any good, okay? So I'm gonna go in with my brush, pack some on. Looks really pretty, honestly. Obviously we do have that light liquid blush underneath, but I wanted to test this one as well. Ooh, okay, definitely pigmented. So I'm gonna spread it side to side so I don't end up looking like a clown. Cause I feel like with red blush sometimes, depending if you use too much, and I love to over blush, but then I can look like I'm giving like clown energy, which I don't want to do. So dispersing it. This is very pretty though. I honestly probably should have used less just because the color is bright, but I do think this is really pretty. And I feel like I personally feel as though this one is more so I could justify the price than I can with the pink one. Again, not that the pink one isn't nice, but there are so many other blushes that are like literally the same shade. This one is really pretty. I don't have anything specifically in my collection that I feel like would be exactly the same as this because although it's red, it's kind of like almost a reddish coral once on the cheeks. And I do like that for the summer. Like it's almost like a natural kind of like sunburn-ish sort of look, like a natural flush out in the sun. Especially I feel like if I get a little tanner, this would just be so beautiful and really give me that natural like sun-kissed look. So I do like it. Do you need to spend $40 on it? No, I'm never gonna tell you that. That is a lot for a blush. There's certain products that I would spend $40 on and not question it. Powder blushes are ones that I don't love to splurge a ton of money on, but I do think this is really pretty. So I am happy with my purchase and I will absolutely get use out of it. So I can't say it's not pretty. Okay, up next, speaking of high-end expensive luxury products, we have the YSL. This is like, the actual name is Rouge Volumpt Candy Glaze. I think people just call it the Candy Glaze at least. That's what I'm gonna refer to it as. In shade O2, this is the Alex Earl effect. She used this and of course it went viral. I think I have tried this before. It may not have been this shade though, but I've tried other products from this collection. I'm gonna just like wipe my lips off so they're clear of product. This is $39. It does come in a variety of different shades, but this is the one that she used, which is like the more clear one for lack of a better term. Like it has a little bit of a pinky undertone, but ultimately, ooh, I pressed it too hard. Okay, it's very soft. It's gonna give clear on the list. Okay, yeah, it's actually really soft, so don't press it too hard. Here's the thing with this. The smell is really good. It's actually different than like a lot of other ones. I wanna say it's like candy apple or something. It's something fruity, but I actually really like the smell. This looks very, very juicy and glowy. To be honest, if you want a high-end lip product, I would say to get this over the Dior lip oil. Like, I think this is nicer. I think this gave a juicier, pretty glow to my lips than the Dior lip oil does. It does feel very nourishing. To spend $39 essentially on like a clear 
lip gloss stick sort of situation is definitely a lot. It's a luxury product. Packaging and everything goes into what you're paying for. So whether or not that's worth it to you is gonna be different person to person. I don't think this is a bad product though. I have to say that. Is it worth $39? Again, that's where it becomes a little bit harder to justify. But again, like I said, if you're looking for a high-end lip product, I personally think this is better than the Dior lip oil. And that one's like crazy viral. You can like barely ever get them in stock. I honestly think this one's nicer and would rather purchase this over that one. Again, because it does give that juicier look and it feels more nourishing. And again, these do come in other shades. So you can get them where they are more tinted, but this is the one that Alex used that went super viral. So I can't say I hate it for a natural, if you just want a natural little look on your lips, this is great. I also feel like you could layer it on top of like a lipstick to give that juicy glossy glow because the finish of it is definitely giving like lip gloss because of the shine. So I don't hate it. Do I love the price point? No, but the product is not bad. Okay, and last but certainly not least, this is a newer product that I have been seeing all over my FYP. I think it's a new product from Morphe. I have not tried that many Morphe products. I feel like Morphe, back in the day on YouTube was like the end all be all. And I don't know, I just always like never really tried a ton of their stuff. I think I've always been like an in-person makeup shopper. So for a long time, I just didn't have a lot of their stuff because they weren't available in stores. I do know that they do have them at Ulta now. And I think, do they have them at Target? I'm not sure, I could be wrong, maybe not. Target, but also they do have them. Anywho, they came out with this new, this is the Continuous Prep and Set Mist Plus. I love a good setting spray that's like a mister like this. Tarte makes one that's like this that I really like. And this you're supposed to be able to use to prep your skin and then also set your skin. It's supposed to be very hydrating. I'm just reading the back here to see like the claims that it says. It also says that it's supposed to strengthen your skin barrier, which is very interesting. And then it has electrolytes in it to give you a glow. So we're gonna try it. I don't know if you're supposed to shake this. No, it doesn't say shake, so not gonna do that. But again, you could have used, you can use it to prep or to set. Mmm, lightest mist ever. I love that. Felt very refreshing going on. It literally felt like the Evian like face spray. Like that's what it felt like. Very, very refreshing. And it has a light scent to it that's very nice. It's not super scented, but it just gives like a light scent. I actually really like this. Mmm, yeah, like it feels really nice. The scent is really good. I feel like it's a good fusion of like things that I like. Oh, it says it has ceramides and antioxidants in it too, which is cool. This I actually really, really do like. I feel as though it did not change the way that my makeup looked at all. Maybe gave like a slight little glow. We didn't get any white splotches or anything from it. And I feel like it does look really, really nice. If you're like a true and true, you only want matte skin type of girly, then maybe you won't like this. I like the subtle glow that it gave. It feels very nice. Like it feels like nothing. You know, it didn't change the way that my face felt or anything like that. So this is definitely a product that I will continue to use. I do really, really like that. Now, last certainly not least, I was about to end the video with these dang things in my hair and forget to take them out. I think I'm gonna hit them with a little bit of heat. Like I'm gonna go in with a blow dryer and just hit it with a little bit of heat. Some people told me to do that at the end before I take them out and we're gonna see if they work. So let me go grab my blow dryer. All right, gonna hit it with a little bit of heat. And you know what? Now I'm gonna let it set. I feel like I probably should have hit them with heat right when I put them in. I'm just gonna let it cool down so it can set. So I'll be back in like 10 minutes and we'll take them out. All right, it's been about 20 minutes. I let it completely set and cool. We're ready to finally take these puppies out and see if they gave us some volume. So let's start. Over here, I'll start on the bottom. Those ones normally, I feel like, okay, a little bit. But I feel like the bottom ones don't normally do a ton. I'm gonna lift and pull up, which a lot of people told me to do too. Okay, all right, we're getting somewhere. Let's do the blue. Okay, definitely getting somewhere. I'm gonna leave the one in the center for last. Let's do this side. This one is actually working a lot better than I feel like any other time that I've done it. So I do like that. Oh my goodness. Now let's do this last one. Definitely have more lift than usual. Now let me part my hair, brush it down a little bit. Oh my goodness. Okay, this works better than any other time that I've ever done it. I'm just gonna brush it through, but it actually looks quite good. This side definitely got more volume than this side did for whatever reason. I don't know why, like up here, we definitely, so I don't know what, what happened, I would have loved for it to be a little more even. This side's gotta catch up, but it, they did work, okay? This is like normally from someone who has pretty flat hair. I do like it, like they're not revolutionary. I think too, if you do it with curly hair, it'll probably be easier to make it look more natural because my hair is straight. Having a ton of volume looks a little unnatural on me, I feel, but I like it, especially like the lift that it gave me up here because I typically, it's pretty flat to my head up there. I wish this side was like the same, but I would say overall, again, for the price too, pretty good and that method seemed to really work. Using like the volumizing texture spray, hitting it with some heat, letting it cool and then taking them out. This was the best attempt I've had at them. So if you struggle with getting volume, you may really like this instead of like having to tease your hair because I can definitely get my hair to look like this, but I would need to like tease it, which I don't love to always do. So pretty 
that I would say. We're ending on a positive note. So I will link everything that we talked about down below in the description box if you guys want to check it out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know any further products that you guys want me to test down below in the comments, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye.